Hi friends, it is great to see you. Welcome back to Lessons About the Old Testament. Uh, this is day eight. We're talking about the flood. This is a tough topic. You can see, this is a sad, sad piece, portion of scripture. It begins about Genesis 6 and ends about Genesis chapter 9. It ends on a high note, but it's, it's tough, as you well know. As always, please send all cards, comments, questions, and complaints to seniorpastoratacfellowship.org, as I love hearing from you. And I did not tell you who I am. My name is Will Davis, Jr. Forgive me for not introducing myself. love to do that. Okay, so the flood account begins with um, a description in Genesis, the sixth chapter of a world out of control. If you read Genesis 3 and death enters in, if you turn the page to Genesis 4, you have two sons of Adam and Eve and you have murder. So as soon as, as soon as things get going, you have your first murder. If you keep reading along in Genesis, you have everything else you can think of. I don't need to list them here. You can sexual sin and generational sin. It's all there. Pride, ego, hatred, lust, all, prejudice, it's all there in Genesis all because of Genesis 3. So when Satan told the humans, you won't die, of course he was lying, and, and death came boiling up to the surface in a big way, but not just death, the evil that precedes it. And God looked down on humanity, and the scripture says, in a very anthropomorphic way to describe God, that God grieved his heart that he'd made man. And he saw that they were out of control and that evil was going to destroy the entire race. If you think today's hard, and I think today's pretty hard. If you think today's hard, think about the days of Noah when evil was to such, so much out of control that God felt like the only appropriate option was to destroy all humanity and start over. That's how bad it was. And by the way, that's God's prerogative. People get mad at God. You're not God. That's God's prerogative. He's a creator. So it was an act of judgment against sin. God always judges sin. He did it ultimately in the cross in Jesus Christ, but he judges sin throughout history. He may be judging us today. We don't know. But he judges sin. It was also an act of mercy. Because, again, if the scriptures, if the scriptures indicate that if we left, if God had left humanity alone, we would have self-destructed. And we probably wouldn't, the planet wouldn't be here today. At least with nobody on it. So in an act of decreation, remember when God parted the waters and put land in the middle of them? And he pushed the waters up into the heavens and he pushed the waters down to the earths and left them there. Well, in a reversal of that act of Genesis 1, God calls the waters back. And they cover the earth. People wonder, how could a worldwide flood happen? Because there was water above the earth and water below it. And it would take any time at all for God to cover this planet. Well, it would take about 40 days, actually. For God to cover the planet to the highest point. I don't believe it was a local flood. I don't believe it was a symbolic flood. I believe it was a, I believe it was a worldwide flood. And I think the evidence exists for that, but it doesn't matter. The scriptures teach God judged the world and also prevented the world from destroying itself. And, and in a little seed of, of covenant and a little seed of hope, he finds a righteous man and a righteous family and puts them on a little boat and sails them through that flood. And they come out on the other side of that flood and he says, go and populate the earth. Let's start over. And we did. So the flood account is a very humbling reminder of how seriously God takes sin and how rapidly the disease of sin spread throughout humanity and how significant it is that it was, we were so evil, God felt the best option was to destroy us and preserve humanity through a righteous family and start over. And at the end, God gives a covenant. He puts a beautiful sign in the sky. I love this. I love rainbows. He puts a beautiful sign in the sky and says, okay, I won't ever do this again. I will just, the, the planet will be destroyed again when we create a new heaven and new earth, but I will never destroy the world by flood again it was as a result of sin. I won't, I won't do this again. And when you see that rainbow in the storm, um, before or after, it's God's reminder that it's curious because the rainbow is associated, in my opinion, with a very unbiblical, ungodly lifestyle. It's been used to promote ways of living that are clearly unscriptural. And that's ironic to me because God put the rainbow in the sky because of sin. He didn't, he didn't put the rainbow in the sky to endorse sin. He put the rainbow in the sky and destroyed the world because of sin. And we should never thwart that in God's face. That's just a little free side point there. I won't charge you for it. 
So in the flood account, we're reminded of how holy God is and how strong God is and how just God is and how seriously he takes sin and how small we are before him. And how we must flee to him in this covenant he's given us, this season of covenant that he's given us to be find salvation and be saved. Because sin will be judged again and those who embrace sin with it. It's a humbling point. I'll see you tomorrow. Lord, thank you for my viewers today. Thank you for salvation through Jesus Christ. And thank you that you promised with the rainbow never to do that again. But we're humbled that you did. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow.